This is the third video on statistical diagrams for the 2017 AQA A-Level Math Spec. This one's on box and whisker diagrams. The Excel file referred to here will be used during the lesson that follows the video. So box and whisker diagrams follow on quite nicely from the cumulative frequency diagrams we were looking at in the last video. They use five measures, the lowest and highest values, the median and the lower and upper quartiles, the quarter and the three quarter values. They're very quick to draw and they're really, really good for presenting data and comparing data in a quick and easy way to understand. We sometimes refer to them as box plots. OK, if we look back to what we did in the last video, we can see here our projected age distribution for the UK for 2005, cumulative frequency on the vertical scale, age on the horizontal scale. Remember we went up to 90, and we went up to 60 million, so the cumulative frequency ends at 60 million. So for our box plot or box and whisker diagram, we need the median, which if you remember we got from 30, it's halfway. If we've got 60 items in the data set, or in this case 60 million then 30 million will be where we take the median. So the median age there, I think it was 39, wasn't it? Lower quartile at 15, 15 being a quarter of 60. Upper quartile at 45 being three quarters of 60. And for most purposes, that's the most important bit done. The median tends to be the average measure that we use to compare data, to make comments, general comments about the data set. And the variability of the data, the consistency, we look at this middle half of the data, the whole idea really using box and whisker plots is we don't pay as much attention to outliers, which we'll talk about in a bit more detail in a minute. We can do the box at any depth, but later we'll just talk very briefly about how sometimes we do associate a meaning to depth, but that's only really when we're comparing data where the amount of data in each set is different. For most purposes, the depth doesn't matter. Right, finally, we take our lowest value. Well, our minimum age is obviously zero. And our maximum value for the second whisker. And there's our five values. Minimum, maximum, median, lower quartile, and upper quartile. OK, we need a scale. Well, the scale's the same as the horizontal scale here, but we'll put it down here so it's easier to see. And there you go. There's the box and whisker plot. OK, as I suggested before, they're really useful in comparing data sets. We're comparing rainfall in the UK with France here. So you can see here... 16 days of March, 20 regions of UK and France. We use the median to compare where it rains most or least. So we would comment that there's more rainfall in France because the median is higher. We then compare the interquartile range to see how variable it is. And again, the UK here is less variable because the interquartile range is smaller. We could 
derive other stats from here, like for example, three quarters of the areas of the UK had less than 22 millimetres of rain. Going up to the upper quartile, and we can make the same comparison there with France, where it's less than 37 millimetres. So to summarise then, five values with the scale, there's your box and whisker plot. Skewness, we refer to skewness with data sets. You can see here, both from the box and whisker plot and here from this bar chart, that the data is skewing here after the upper quartile. We have a long whisker here. We say when a distribution looks like this that the data set is positively skewed. So tail to the right, positively skewed. Obviously tail to the left, negatively skewed. We say they're symmetrical or almost symmetrical if they follow a vaguely symmetrical shape with no obvious skew to either side. Right, I mentioned this earlier, but we do sometimes consider the depths of the boxes if the proportions are different for the sizes of the data set. So, for example, if we had a data set with 60 items and a second one with 45, and we made the depth of the first box one centimeter, as 45 is three quarters of 60, we would make the depth of the second box three quarters of a centimetre. Outliers. Well, there's no hard and fast rule here, but we usually show outliers using a broken line. We would usually start an outlier if the data is more than one and a half interquartile ranges away. So for example, here we've got that interquartile range. This is our 20 to 56, wasn't it? So that's 36. So one and a half lots of 36 further, and then anything else would be considered an outlier. And that's where a broken line might come in up to the maximum or the minimum explain it a bit more here so one and a half times the interquartile range below the lower quartile or more than one and a half times the interquartile range above the upper quartile is an outlier and from that point on either that point or that point we would break the line to indicate outliers from there on so this example here Anything above 55 would be considered to be an outlier. So 56 would be an outlier there. Our maximum value. Only just, but it would technically.